In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, our Lord, as we gather on this Lord's day to worship and praise him, in the name of Jesus Christ, let us continue. You might remember when it happened. The lines were long, backed up a good distance on Jefferson Avenue. The parking lot was crammed full of cars. The police had been called out to direct the traffic because it was backed up so far on Jefferson Avenue and extra help was working. What was happening? Was it the opening of a new store? Was it the beginning of a new church in our community? Was it a crowd looking for the first tickets to a concert or to a playoff game? No, it was none of those things. It was the grand opening of a hamburger joint. <laughs> Remember? Cookout on Jefferson Avenue. I had never seen such a crowd for a hamburger joint in all my life. But I have to admit, they have one of the best fresh banana shakes I have ever tasted. Not that I need them, but I do like them a lot. You know, grand openings are exciting, especially when waiting for something special. That's why it's called a grand opening. It's a new season. It's a new day with great and grand opportunities. Brothers and sisters, at Resurrection today and next Sunday is God's grand opening. God is inviting all of us to be a part of the opening of his holy word in Sunday school and adult Christian education. And I challenge you, are you ready to be a part of this ongoing grand opening? Today you have the opportunity to sign up as part of our grand opening. Sign up for Sunday school in the hallway. Sign up for adult classes. And next Sunday on September the 16th to actually begin participating in opening God's grand holy word of life so that we may grow through Sunday school and adult classes. The Apostle Paul, excuse me, the Apostle Peter, in his second epistle, chapter 3, writes these words. Let's say these words together. Grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory, both now and forever. Amen. Grow. Note that word. The topic of growth is written all over the Holy Scriptures. God loves growth, and he loves to see growth in people. Let's be honest. The human body was designed for growth. Various growth hormones are released at special times in the human life cycle so that our children may grow. There are growth plates in our bones, and as the plates lengthen, skin, muscles, tendons, and ligaments grow with those bones. In addition, God has placed in our minds a curiosity that spurs intellectual and psychological growth. God loves spiritual growth in his people. It's easy to understand the process of bodily growth and intellectual growth because we can see it and we can measure it. Spiritual growth cannot be measured with a yardstick or a test. God challenges his people to never stop growing spiritually because he, our Lord, Desires growth, causes growth, and directs growth so that we can be what he has called us. You are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. But growth takes something outside of us. Growth requires an outside source of power. Plants need sunlight and soil to grow. The body needs food to grow. The mind needs educational experiences to grow. Likewise, our spiritual life needs the power that comes from our Savior Jesus and his word to grow. Jesus speaking to his disciples and us today said, 
I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Connected to Jesus through baptism, growing and remaining in the Lord through his word, strengthened by our Savior through his body and blood in the sacrament of the altar, there is power for growth. Just as a plant cannot grow without the light of the sun, we cannot grow without the light emanating from the very Son of God. We only grow by grace. And God gives that grace freely, forgiving our sins in his great and wonderful mercy and calling us into a growing relationship with his Son, a relationship that is empowered by the Holy Spirit. That's the whole reason for the ministry of our Savior, Jesus Christ. His miraculous birth, coming into this world to be just like us, but without sinning. And his perfect life lived for us. His death on the cross that pays for your sins and my sin and the sins of the world. And his victorious resurrection when he conquers even our greatest enemy, death itself. All to give to us eternal life that we may be his people here now at work. We are to grow in the grace and mercy of Jesus the Savior, to grow in Christ, to mature in our faith. We have to be rooted in the Lord and his word. And the best way to get to know a person is to listen to him or her as well as observe them in the circumstances of life. And it's the same way with Jesus the Savior. The best way to get to know Jesus Christ is to do as Mary did when Jesus came to visit both her and her sister Martha. And what did Mary do? She sat at Jesus' feet and listened to him. As we listen to the scriptures read in worship, as we hear them proclaimed in a sermon, as we have our own private and family Bible devotion time, as we study God's word in Sunday school or in a Sunday morning adult class or on a weekday Bible class or in a small group study, we hear the words of Jesus coming to us, feeding our souls. Jesus stretches us and he stretches our children for growth, challenging our assumptions about life and how life is to be lived under the cross, taking away our fear of death, strengthening and equipping us for the hard and difficult times of life and undergirding our joy for times of celebration. We see in God's word Jesus' life lived for us, dying for us, rising from the dead for us, calling each and every one of us to be his disciples at work in this community in his name, Strengthen and growing in his word. You know, there's a character in the Gospels whom Jesus once described with four words. Great is your faith. She was a Canaanite woman. A woman who was concerned about her demon-possessed daughter. And that's about all we know about her. And yet, in this single encounter with the Savior, he spoke to her these words, great is your faith. Brothers and sisters, how about your faith in Jesus the Savior? Is it growing stronger? Is it flourishing through word and sacrament? Then I challenge you to plug into a Sunday morning adult Bible class, to be a part of our Tuesday or Wednesday Bible studies, and to set up Good example for your children and grandchildren, nieces and nephews to follow by bringing them at the same time to Sunday school that they too may mature and grow because God loves growth, especially spiritual growth. Our challenge is to be a growing and flourishing community as God's people, deepening our faith and faith walk with the Lord. 
May he grant that for the sake of Jesus, our, our Savior. Amen.